John called God. John said, God is love. Amen? John says, God is love. Uh, but like the song can say, there's only love in the heart of God. Um, and and I, I want to kind of, I, I want to give it to you like God gave it to you. I'm going to give it to you like God gave it to me. Um, we must know God's words. They are an expression of God's heart. Amen? The songs, I want you to remember this, the songs that said, there's only love in the heart of God. You must, how many of us know that people's words often are a reflection of people's heart? Like somebody may say something to you, and you may hear somebody say, how many times you heard somebody say this or heard somebody say this, that, well, I knew you was feeling that all along. I knew you was feeling all along. And the reason why they're, they're saying that, because when you finally released it from your mouth, your words came out and revealed what they thought you were feeling about them all along. Amen. You always had that in your heart. You How many of us heard somebody say, you always had that in your heart toward me? I could tell, you know, in other words, their words. And that's why I thought this was so interesting when God said, when I was hearing this song, but God had given me the message before the song, but the message tied into what God was teaching me. There's, it's, there's only love in the heart of God. Now, what's interesting about that is Satan had to convince Eve that there was not love in the heart of God for her not to be able to hold on to what God was saying. Because when you believe that there's love in the heart of somebody, their words, you trust in those words and you believe in those words and you hold on to those words. So he had to convince Eve that there was not love in the heart of God pertaining to her. So therefore, she can so he can get her to violate God's word. Amen. You know, it's, it's a game of deception and it's a game that people play in relationships and situations for real. In other words, that if somebody can convince you that your husband don't love you the way, you know, it's that you that you, that you think you don't feel like he love you the way he um, should, or your wife don't love you the way they should. And sometimes the way they are speaking and acting make you feel like they don't love you the way they should. When somebody comes speaking in a certain type of way, it might draw you because why you believe that these words are more. Of, now we have to watch out because the key to this sermon tonight, the key that the love is in the heart of God, is to know what love looks like too. Because, see, sometimes someone can speak to you in a certain way and you feel like they're loving you, but they're really appealing to your hurt, your flesh, and your desires to take you from the pain or the struggle that you're going through. It, you understand what I'm saying? Like if I'm going through a struggle in a certain situation and you come with flattery words, the Bible says flattery words, your flattery words can appeal to my hurt, my pain, and what I'm going through at that time and cause me to draw to you. Amen? So the key to it is, the, the, the key to knowing love is to know the heart of God, right? And, and the Bible says, and I want to go over it because so God wants to be able to know there's a distinguishing difference. And I wrote this down. I want you all to understand this. There is a distinguishing difference. Um, what, comes out of, what comes out of God's heart is not the same thing that comes out of Satan's heart. There is a distinguishing difference between what's in God's heart and what's in Satan's heart. Would you all agree or disagree? Anybody want to come and do it? There is a, they, they, watch this, I want you to understand something. They're not even close. What comes out of God's heart is totally different. And that's why I love the song that was played. There's only love what? It's only love in the heart of God. Amen? So Satan, what's funny, if he's a deceiver, he has to pretend that his words are kind of cultivated in loving you more than God loves you. Amen. How many of y'all know this? Let me give you an example. Let me give you an example. If there was a kid, right? Let's say Amber had a kid. Let's mess with Amber married. She got a kid and she has a little baby son. Right. And let's say she's around, you know, she hanging around. Uh, she, um, she has nephews and she has ne and she's real close. Let's say to one of her nephews. They're going to and she has a son with her and the son wants to eat some candy. Right. He wants to eat some candy. At the time, Amber's the mom says, "No, you're not getting no camera. You, you haven't. You had. You have. You no, know, you haven't had dinner, right? You haven't had dinner or anything. You're not going to get any candy." So the kid begins to cry a little because mom is telling him no. And then his uncle, no, let's say grandma, grandma come, and grandma take him in the room, and grandma gives him some candy. How many of us know at that time that grandma is giving him candy, he feels that grandma loves him more than mom? Amen. But see, the danger in that message is 
that he's also believing mom don't love him in a way because of grandma did it. Amen. So you might start wondering they don't all why the child, her own child might be kind of coming disrespectful to her or won't listen to her because grandma, if grandmother is underhanding what she is saying, her words, and she's underhanding her words by filling up with new words that feel what that kid really want. That kid that really what that kid really want is going to think grandma loves, grandma really loved me. Grandma really cared for me. Grandma really there for me. You're not there for me. You don't really love me. But how many of us see the trickery in that, the deception in that? Anybody see the trickery and deception in that? Because that trickery and deception is the same game, it's the same game Satan plays. He is to convince you, Satan's job is to try to convince us that he loves us more than God and that in that loving us more than God, he will give us what we want. He will let, release to us what we desire. He will do that what we desire and God won't. That's why he, he you know, he said, he, he, that's why Satan convinced Eve. God don't really love you. God don't really, he, you know, he, God, God jealous of you. He don't, he don't want you to be like he is. Amen. So it's a, it's, why is God teaching on this tonight? In the series of God teaching, what has God said? And it did Satan say, did God really say that? Because see, because yeah, the grandma start convincing the child, mama didn't really say that you can't have no candy. You know, I, I'm, I'm going to give you some candy anyway. What mama said is wrong. And that's Satan's job is to convince us that what God is saying is wrong. God says, wait till you get married. Satan says, no, wait till you fall in love. Love is enough for you to be able to make decisions like that. The love of, but God says, no, I want you in a covenant, in a covenant marriage, and, and, and the bed is undefiled in that situation. Satan says, no, God don't really mean that. He just really means when you have deep feelings with somebody, you can bring it in that area right there. That was what I'm saying. So watch this. You got, the only way you're going to win in this situation is, he said, my sheep know what? And another they shall not follow. And I oh, says. And what's interesting, knowing his voice, but not only knowing his voice, for like the songs just said, that there's only love in the heart of God. So when you know his voice, know that that voice, those words are coming from a heart of, they are coming from a heart of. So when God tell you not to do something, it's coming from a heart of. When God tell you not to go somewhere, it's coming from a heart of. It is not coming from a heart of rules and regulations. It's, it's coming from a heart of love that creates barriers and things that and standards that cause you to stay safe. Do we understand that? Now, and I'm going to tell you something. We may say we understand that, but that seems like that's a real battle going on with the church today. Understanding and, understanding and being able to distinguish the difference between when God is speaking or when the enemy is speaking and knowing that in the enemy and not really understanding what love is. That's why I love what Jesus said this. He said, if you love me, you y'all know Jesus was blunt enough to say, if you love me, you'll do what I say. Y'all know that? He said, it's like they say, if you love me, you'll do what I say. So why? Because that makes sense because he know what he say is coming from a place of love. Remember now we talked about it during on Sunday that they say who is he? They, they 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 was they, they was they was tripping off of Jesus because he he was one who taught with authority, right? He taught like he he knew what was going on, so he understood. He he didn't speak like I wondered. One thing Jesus know for that without a doubt that he know God loved his people. Amen. He knows John 3.16 inside out that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. How many of you know that God so loved the world that from his love he was motivated? Everybody say the word. Because the Bible says the word was made flesh, right? Jesus is that word. God loved the world so much that he gave the word. He gave the word. So what's interesting that the word from somebody's mouth re reveals their heart. And it's what's in their heart. Is it motivated by love or is it motivated by lust or desire or by Satan? What's motivating the heart today? And we need to know there is a distinguishing difference between them. And God wants you to know there is a gulf between the two. And see, what's happening to people is that people are trying to do things without understanding God's heart. Amen. And they don't know, the Bible says, again, the Bible says, I mean, the, well, not the Bible, the songs say, but I'm going to show you in Scripture. The songs say, 
There's only love. Only love comes out of the heart of God. Amen? Only love. So that means if you didn't really come to, and, and since the word is going, we, and, I, and I'm, I'm going to get ahead, I'm getting ahead of myself, but I'm going to show you the difference. The Bible says out of the abundance of the what? Heart. The mouth speak it, right? So the heart, the, the words from the mouth reveals the condition of the heart. Amen? The words from somebody's mouth. But see, but how many of you know that God says he wants to pull his word where? In our hearts. He wants to pull his word in our hearts. He wants to pull the word, his words in our hearts. So when you speak, people see what? The love of God. When you speak, people will begin to see the love of God. And see, that's why it's hard to go, to go do something without sitting at the feet of God. Because without sitting at the feet of God, eating the word of God, like Peter said, Lord, where shall we go? For in you are the words that lead to eternal life. The love, the love of God, the, the gift of God, the eternal life. To without sitting down and really eating the word of God. And see, some people, you can take certain words. You can say, to, but you, don't, you know, people say I love you all day on movies and they're like, they don't mean that. They're called actors. And what's amazing, we got a world full of actors that, that, that don't really, that like saying love, but don't have an ideal of what, the idea, uh, idea of what love really means. Amen? And one thing I love about the Bible, it didn't leave us to put the definition in love. The Bible says, in this we see the love of God. God, God said, I'm going to show you where you can see the love of God. Where you see the love of God, he said, well, essentially, he said, you see the love of God in the cross. People are like, I don't know, that ain't the kind of, I ain't learned about love from that perspective. I don't like, from the cross? Yeah, from the cross. Then the Bible says stuff like this, there's no greater love than one who will lay down his life for his brother. So God's ideal of love is about sacrificing and, sur and, and, and surrender, so sacrificing and also serving others. But let, let's, let's, let's take a look at it. Let's kind of look at it from, uh, uh, let's look at it from a situation. And I want us to be able to distinguish there's a difference between it. Everybody say difference. We have to know, I'm going to tell you something. Y'all got to understand, there is a difference between, see, and I know it's kind of hard to really get it because when you watch movies like Titanic or you watch, when you watch movies like Titanic or you watch movies like, what's that, basketball? What is it, loving, loving basketball? These type of movies present love being taken place. So your ideal of love is perverted. Because those movies, there's no love in those movies. Those movies are laced with lust. There is no love in those movies. Those movies, there is no love in love and basketball. That, was, that is not a love story. That was a lust story. In, 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 in the Titanic, that was not a love story. That was a lust story. It was a story built up on the lust of the flesh and built up in all type of emotions. And we have been sold. That's, a, that's why when God begins to show us what love is, we don't want it. Because your ideal of love has been tainted by the world and it's been tainted by lust. So when God begins to reveal to us what really love is, we're like, God, I don't want that. And when you don't really want God, it's funny how many people want to do God's work without God's love. Isn't that amazing? Want to do, but let me tell you what happens when you want to do God's work without God's love. That's self-glorification. That's self-exhortation. It's not for God. Amen. It's not. So I want us to, so I'm going to take you, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna, we're going to go into the scriptures and we're going to look at it tonight because God wants us to look at it a little bit tonight because we got to be able to discern, say, we got to discern the difference. We got to know the difference from what God said and, 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 and Satan coming up to us. Did God really say that? Because what's being said is, remember now, what's being said is by either person, by either situation, is molded one person, only one of them. What's being said by God and what Satan come behind God and said, the motivation, there's only one of them that is speaking that's motivated by love. Amen? There's only one who is speaking that is motivated by love. Play the song a little bit more. Just play a little bit again. Or oh, you can't because there's song, right? I forgot. There's only one that's, that's speaking that speak, that, that, um, that's actually love is motivated. And I'm going to tell you, that's why 
I said this a long time. I said this a while ago, and I'm going to continue to say this. I remember a woman told me, she said, she told God, God, I don't love you. And, but then she said, Lord, teach me how to love you. The truth be told, every Christian should find themselves saying that. Because why? The first thing that God going to begin to deal with when you begin to get saved is your, your lack of ability to love. Your, your lack of ability to love. Because we have a perverted ideal of what love is. And if you don't let God begin to get in your heart and show you what really love is, you will call yourself trying to do things for God, motivated by your ideal of love. But sometimes our ideal of love, it's funny that our ideal of love is only good when it's benefiting us. So let's go, we're going to go to Matthew 12. We're going to start reading at verse 22. I want to show you some who didn't really understand um, the difference. We started the twenty second verse. Matthew chapter 12, verse 22. Then a demon oppressed man who was blind and mute was brought to him, and he healed him, so that the man spoke and saw. And all the people were amazed and said, Can this be the son of David? But when the Pharisees heard it, they said, It is only by Beelzebub, the prince of demons, that this man casts out demons. Let me tell you what's interesting. You see God's love moving here to change a man that's in bondage, a physical bondage, right? But then you see the religious order moving here and begin to interpret what God was doing as something the devil is doing. I got to get that. Remember, I told you, it's only when two are speaking, it's only one of them motivated by love. Jesus begins to move here, and he does what? And, and, and what's funny about it, then was he brought unto him um, one possessed with a devil. There was one possessed with a devil. Jesus begins to move and deliver the one who's possessed with a devil, right? Deliver him. And the religious order begins to say what? That, but when the Pharisees heard it, they said, this fellow doeth not cast out devils, but by the Belzebub, by the prince of the devil. In other words, it's the devil actually doing this. We got two different hearts. One not understanding the heart of another. Amen? Keep on reading. You'll see on some about. Verse 25. Mm -hmm. Knowing their thoughts... He said to them, every kingdom divided against itself is laid waste. And no city or house divided against itself will stand. Now watch this. Y'all got to get this. If it's divided against itself, two different motives cannot stand together. Two intentions, motives cannot stand. They cannot stand together. They, they, they cannot. In other words, what, what is he showing here? He's saying, Jesus said, Jesus said hold up, this is a kingdom. This is, this, is, this is a kingdom situation. Kingdom means God way of doing things versus the enemy way of doing things. The motive behind. One, he says, a kingdom divided cannot what? Stand. He's saying, wait a minute, you're saying that, and, what, and he's, he's going to actually use, them, use this by them saying that he cast out, that the devil cast out a devil. But he's making a greater, he's making a bigger point, and, and the bigger point he's trying to get us to see is that a kingdom divided against itself cannot stand. If God's heart is motivated by love and your heart is motivated by lust and evil and wickedness, that kingdom is divided against itself. That house, that house is not going to be able to stand. Amen? He's going, he's going to make this point. You can't, that's why, remember I told you, only one heart is, one, only one heart it's being motivated by love. God's word, God's word is motivated by his love. Go ahead. And no city or house divided against itself will stand. Verse 26. Mm -hmm. 
And if Satan cast out Satan, he is divided against himself. How then will his kingdom stand? Watch this. If Satan is not motivated by love, then he needs somebody to walk with him that's not motivated by love. Amen. That's, that, how many of y'all know that was, that was all of us? How many know we were all children of the world at one point? We were not motivated by what? Love. We were motivated by the flesh. Uh, the Bible says a man is carried away by his what? Own, own lust, his own desire. We were motivated by our own desires. The Bible says whoever you yield your members to, that's your father. And when we yield our members to, the, uh, to sin, watch this, to sin, to sin and the lust thereof, when we yield our members to sin and the desire thereof, then we were carried away. We were not walking and operating like God. You can't operate like God and operate in lust and sin. And sin. So there is a separation. There is a sanctification. And that sanctification comes by what? The word, right? He said, I sanctify you through my word. My word is truth. When you begin to get the word of God in you, I hide the word of my heart that I may not sin again. When you begin to get the word of God in you, it's sanctifying you, setting you apart from a system that is motivated by lust and its own desire. Y'all getting this? Okay. Go ahead. But if it is by the Spirit of God that I cast out demons, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. He says, it's by the kingdom, it's by God's way. If that demon was cast out by the Spirit of God, then you know the kingdom has come. Why? It's casting out the opposite of what it is. See, the Bible says, how can two walk together unless they agree, right? The reason, oh man, we're going to get into the night. The reason some of us pick the men or women you pick, because it's the darkness you walk in. Because God just told us, but, and, and some of us found out when we were struggling to pick the person that we picked, that the reason why it didn't work, because as you started walking toward God, them kingdoms was different. Those ways of operating are different. I want you to understand something. The love of God does not operate according to the world system. So we need to stop calling things in the world system love. Let me get, let me get an example. A man with a man, and they're talking about love. That is not love. It's not love. And to call it or to come in any type of agreement with it is to come in agreement with a lie. A woman with a woman, to call that love, that is not love. That is lust. That is perversion. And to come in agreement with it and say that that has anything to do with love, you have bit, you have what? Conceived. A lie. When you hear a man of God say, well, you know what? If they love each other, I'm, I don't read that. No, he can't speak that way if he actually knows the truth. Because God, the Bible says his sheep know his voice and another they shall not follow. His sheep, God's sheep is not going to come in agreement with something that is not speaking the truth. Because love don't speak lies. Neither does love come in agreement with lies. Because you hear people like, well, I think people have a right to, you know, they love each other. They have a right to, just, you know, as long as it don't bother me. Love no, it, it ain't about it bothering, me, bothering me or not. The, bottom, the, the truth is I know the truth. That is not love. See, when you start stamping love on things, then what you begin to do is say there's a justification for the actions in which they are indulging themselves in. And then let me tell you how that's going. Let me tell you how it's working today. When you talk, when you talk to that, 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 that group of people, they the first thing they're going to say is, you're not tolerant. You don't love people. They use the word love as a means to justify their behavior or their, their behavior and their decisions. So that means, watch this, the point of lie, the point of the lie must be love. Amen. The deception of the lie. We think the deception of the lie is the man with the woman, the man with the man, the man with all that. Or people are uh, not only even heterosexuals that's that's sexing each other. Like we think the point of the lie is to act. No, the act is a result 
are what? Them not in a position of love. Do we get that? But see, I don't know, because the Bible, even, like the, what the song just, what, what, what did the song just say? Out of, the, out of the heart, what comes out of the heart of God? Only love comes out of the heart of God. Only love comes out of the heart of God. See, I'm going to tell you with this message, people are going to have a problem with this. Where they have a, people, some people have a problem with this message because why? Because you break, God is breaking it down to the lowest denominator, to the motivating factor. And, you know, and when you do that, people are going to tell you, you can't tell me who I love. You can't tell me what I feel. Actually, I, yes, I can. I can tell you that your actions don't line up no, with what love says it is. So that, that, that means it cannot be. Well, I know what I feel. Yeah, it's lust. You feel pleasure. You enjoy everything. You enjoy everything your flesh like. But that's what the, watch this, that, that's what the word says. Lust of the flesh, lust of the eye, and the pride of life. The Bible said these things are not of the Father. God is the Father, right? John says God is what? Amen. If God is love, these things do not come forth out of God. God did not speak or declare these things. Are we getting this? So we have to understand there is a difference. So when you go in talking to somebody, you might want to know that their issue was, their battle is, the root of their problem is not understanding love. So it may, may, so may want to teach you how to pray and pray that they have an encounter with God's love. Which, which was manifested on the cross, where the, where the debt of sin was paid. And the Bible says, shall we remain in sin? God forbid. But we were baptized into his death. We were baptized into his love. There's no greater love than one who will lay down his life. We were, you and I were baptized into his love. We were submerged in Christ into the love of God. Amen? Because we were all sinners. Am I right? And we were baptized into his death because he took on our sin. We were, baptized. we were baptized in how we got free into the death of sin. Okay. Let's keep, let's keep going. Go ahead. Verse 29. Mm -hmm. Or how can someone enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods unless he first binds the strong man? Then indeed he may plunder his house. Who see, unless you unless you bind seats. Jesus know how to bind up the enemy. Amen. To begin to destroy his kingdom. Amen. And the enemy know how to bind. He, he can bind you up. Y'all want to know a way enemy can bind you up, bind us up? One way he can bind you up is when your heart starts getting cold. Because somebody offended you. Or because somebody said something you didn't like or move, and your heart began to get cold. And, and when your heart began to get cold, it's funny, the Bible says, the day you hear the word of God, do not harden your heart. Why? Do not harden the word, because the word of God is the expression of God's love, right? Because remember, say, out of the abundance of the heart, the, the, out of abundance of the, heart, the mouth speak it. The words of God reveal God's love. And when you harden your heart toward the word of God, you're hardening your heart towards God's love. So that means you're rejecting God's love to say, I'm sorry. You're rejecting God's love to say, forgive me. You're reject rejecting God's love to, to operate in self-control. You're rejecting God's love to, to do what his words say, that, that the people can see his love because your heart got, because you got offended, because you got angry, because you got bitter. And now you are a judge of people. Now you are a condemner of people because your heart is cold. One of, one of the greatest weapons you have to watch out for a cold heart is pride. Pride will cause a heart to become so cold because why? When you prideful, nobody can't tell you nothing. You think you know everything. So you're not open for God to tell you that you're even wrong or how you perceive people, how you see people. Because when you open up, when the word of God comes in, God doesn't care how you see people. He cares how he see people. Because why? how we see people can come from our experiences. How we see people can come from um, 
our own interpretation. We see people as, you, we'll see somebody as, they don't deserve to be saved. And know what's funny about the story that we're reading that Jesus is making a, that God is, through Christ, is, is making a great distinguish between the two kingdoms, is that they upset this man was, this man had a demon and this and that, and the religious people, watch this, watch this, they were upset because Jesus was healing them, healing him on the Sabbath. So their laws and their tradition said this man did not deserve to be free. They thought he didn't deserve to be free on that day because of what they thought spiritually was more important. Well, I'm, y'all better hear the spirit of God. You better, you better hear what God is showing saying today. Some people believe that some people shouldn't be free, that some people shouldn't be delivered, that God ain't with them because of what they think or how God should act or move in that situation. The same God that gave them grace when they nasty and filthy behind got saved, and then they act like they, and then if they very pride that they has them deceived as if they don't need mercy and grace no more. Because they don't learn how to hide their sin under religion. But that's what was going on here. You got the religious order saying, this dude don't deserve to be free. Why? The law say on, on the Sabbath, no, leave him in that situation. Leave him in that situation. No, this brother don't be, deserve to be free. Why? Because he slipped up one time. Oh, this sister don't deserve to be free. Why? Because she had an abortion. Oh, this person don't deserve to be free. Why? Because they are homosexual. Oh, this person don't deserve to be free. Why? Because they, well, they was a pedophile. So now you begin to determine who can be free and who cannot be free by your own religious standard because you don't understand God's heart and the motivation of God's salvation, of the gift of salvation. So these judges that go around and judge, they merely condemn themselves. Because that's what, that's what, that's what, and then they throw, and then they began to say, you know what, they, then he began, what was so funny? The cat began to say, it's the devil. That's the devil, he the devil. Jesus is the devil. Because, because he moved, because he moved contrary to what they thought he should have been doing. They said, this can't be God, because he's not respecting what we think and what we feel like should be going on at that point. Amen? Do we see this? But see, when you have the love of God, and then, you're gonna, then, then your thing is to move as God would move. You know, we talked about Jonah. You know what was interesting? One of, one of um, Jonah's biggest problems is Jonah thought Nineveh was not worthy to be saved. Y'all know that. You read the story of John. He thought Nineveh was just too, too wicked as if he was so righteous. But he thought he can tell God that this, that they should be. And I'm telling you, this is, this is another thing going on today. It's going on bigger. To, it's going to be. That not people, no, no, you, you can see it on Facebook. It's going on today. It's not about correction. It's about judgment. It's about you going to determine who God going to forgive, who God going to save, who God not going to save. I wouldn't bring God down to try to be like you. He's trying to bring you up to be like him. You know, it's some scripture. It's funny. The Bible says that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whomsoever believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. But there's another scripture also in the Bible where he says that God is not like some men slack in his promises, but he delays his coming that all may be God, the whole Bible is talking about God. He even say that he going he, he, he said he's not slacking to come. His coming is not because he know that he cannot come. His coming is that he throws back his coming because he wants to see more saved. That's that ain't my opinion. That's what the word said. Who are you to contest what God is showing with his heart is like? But that's what, that's what, um, keep on reading. Because this, this, that was his problem. That, this, that, that, it's nothing new. It was the problem here too. Go ahead, keep reading. Then indeed he may plunder his house. Verse 30. Whoever is not with me is against me. And whoever does not gather with me scatters. You, listen to what he just said. If you, he said, there is, a, there is a difference. If you're not with me, you're against me. And he shows you, he says, I'm doing what? What did he say he's doing? 
he's gathering. Like Isaiah 56, he says, I'm gathering. But he said, those not with me, they don't gather, they do what? They scatter. And then when he talks about Isaiah, he says, in Isaiah, he says, the false shepherd, and in the New Testament, he said, the false shepherd, he leaves when he sees the wolf come. Because he's a harling. He's in it for another. He, he's in it. And, and, and see, we see that battle. We, we also saw that battle with, with Peter, too. Peter, uh, with Peter, was talking, I got, uh, uh, Lord, I die for you. I die for you. Until, until, until he couldn't die the way he wanted to fight. Yeah? Until he didn't. And that's why he came back and said to Peter, Peter, you love me. Did you get my love right, Peter? If you got my love right, then go feed my sheep. Watch this. Watch what he says. Go feed my sheep no matter what it's going to cost you. Because if you go back and you if you go back and you look at it, after he said to Peter the, the third time, "If you love me," then he told Peter, "When you was young, you went where you wanted went, where you went where you wanted to go. But when you get old, they're gonna carry you." He began to tell Peter how he was going to die. He began to tell Peter, "This is going to cost you your life in doing my work, and you're gonna have to fight the way I tell you to fight." Amen. You might have to take something. You might feel like you're absolutely correct. And you might be absolutely correct. And God tell you, keep your mouth closed. I'm doing something here. And don't say a word to your boss. Don't say a word to nobody in the situation. Just go to work and keep doing what I told you to do. Or he may not release you from that way, marriage. And, and you, I'm, I'm not getting this out of it. I'm not getting that out of it. I feel like this person only loves me. He says, I want you to stay. Not only do I want you to stay, I want you to, they won't, they won't, even, they won't even buy you food when they go out, but I want you to buy them food. The person you work with won't even say good morning to you, but I want you to say good morning to them. My God, that's some power. That's real power. To be able to love your enemy for real, that's real power. She, let's see, he's going to keep on. Go ahead. Verse 31, therefore, if I tell you, Every sin and blasphemy will be forgiven people. But the blasphemy against the spirit, that's the Holy Spirit, will not be forgiven. And whoever speaks a word against the Son of Man will be forgiven. But whoever speaks against the Holy Spirit will, be will not be forgiven either in this age or in the age to come. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. It is to guide us in all what? The Holy Spirit is the sealer. When you receive those, you are sealed by the Holy Spirit. It is the comforter. He is the Spirit. If you're not going to believe the Holy Spirit, you're going to call the Holy Spirit a liar. You're going to ain't nothing behind that. That's it. You're rejecting it. Keep on going. Either make the tree good and its fruit good, or make the tree bad and its fruit bad. Is anybody rejoicing that he, he, he makes that statement after he talk about the spirit? He says, I know what the spirit produces. Amen? I know. And what do you, I got to see, please see the revelation of that. He said, there's a distinguishing the difference of what the Holy Spirit produces. So you, talk, you all came out of your mouth talking about that the Holy Spirit produces, you call it the devil. And you're coming out your mouth saying it produces something that God don't, that, 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 that does not what God produces. See, one way to greet the Holy Spirit is to begin to attach it to something it does not produce. To say that's the Holy Spirit and, you're, and it's producing lies, to call something God 
or to call something not God that does not produce. See, that's, 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 a, that's, a, that's a terrible thing because the Holy Spirit begins, it's the Spirit of God, right? It brings the Word, right? And, and, and when you begin to reject the Word or take the Word and make your own interpretation of it and birth something that the Holy Spirit does not produce, Because one thing about the Holy Spirit, the Son of Man, he said, you could, you could talk about the Son of Man, right, this and that. But see, the Holy Spirit is going to dwell in you. So the seed in you is evident by what's being, what is producing in you. And what is producing is motivated by love. So when we start calling, y'all better hear this. Because now you see it going on today that men and women who are standing behind pulpits and preaching God, preaching the word that comes from the heart of love and saying it produces something contrary to what the word of God produces. As if there is no distinguishing difference between what the seed of God produces and what the seed of corruption or what the seed of Satan produces. When God made it obvious that he was going to bruise his head and he was going to bruise his heel, that there was going to be enmity, opposition between the two, that there was going to be something different from the seed that was going to come from heaven and what it was going to produce in you than the seed that comes from the system of the world of the wicked one, the wicked one of the world. But now we're going to call those things good, evil, and call those things evil, good. And that is what's happening to now. And we're grieving the Holy Spirit because we're now saying that it's producing something that God never called it to produce. And now we're calling, they say, you got to look at, look, look for how Jesus is saying this. Look at the story that he's telling. Look at what is lined up with. They, Jesus causes a man to see. I mean, a demon get cast out of man. He does this, and they call him the devil. So what they were saying is, watch this, watch what They're saying that the works that he was doing was being manifested by Satan. And what is God trying to show, say to us? That the religious order began to, instead of humbling themselves to God, and they are now saying that the work of God is being manifested to reveal who the devil is when he's the spirit of truth. How is it the spirit of truth abide in you and then produce a lie? He makes it perfectly clear what, what he's about to say, what he says right after the spirit by saying, be able to distinguish the difference. Then he says, because a kingdom divided cannot stand. You cannot produce, you, you, you cannot say you have this and produce this. You cannot say, in other words, we need to, it looks like I say, examine what you're producing. Keep reading. Or make the tree bad and its fruit bad, for the tree is known by its fruit. He says, make the tree what? Bad. If it's bad, if the fruit bad, make the tree what? In other words, make up your mind. Is the tree bad? In other words, the seed that you, the seed that you are partaking of, if it's bad? In other words, make, because why is he saying this to them? Because they are, what's this? They are carrying themselves like they are religious people, like they are godly people. And these, y'all gotta, you gotta understand, the one who is calling Jesus the devil are the godly, are, are the godly religious people at that point. It'll be the same thing if somebody's up here preaching and they are and they are what? And they are in agreement with homosexuality. That's wicked. Or in agreement with abortions. That's wicked. How can you be in agreement with something that the word of truth will not be in alignment with? That God's heart, that love, that love will not be in agreement with. He's, a, he's telling these religious, or he's telling these people, man, make your tree. Make up your mind. Make the tree. If the tree corrupt, make it. If it's bad food, make it. But watch how you distinguish the different. Go ahead. You brood of vipers. He said, you, you know, that, is that he, he's, he's repeating what um, John the Baptist said. You know what's funny? When John the Baptist said, you know what he said? He was talking to the religious order again. 
He the, he's the second person to call them vipers. And when John the Baptist said it, you know what he told them? It's funny, John the Baptist said that he said it within, in the, similar to the same contents because he said to him, if you reset, repent and go give fruit worthy of repentance. In other words, turn and go make sure your life look like that you have turned and the fruit that's now coming from your life reflect that you have turned. Somebody said, come on, church. He, John the Baptist said, now Jesus said, Jesus go to the fruit and Jesus talk about the tree. Make, he said, make the fruit right. Because what he said, watch what he said, because they're going to know you by your. You spend, you see, not talking about. He said, they're going to know you by your fruit, boy. You see, not talking about, come on out, come on. He said, they're going to know you by your fruit. That's why I love John 15. He said, watch what John 15, I think it's John 15, right? When the vine. In John 15, in the, in, when, he, when he talks about the vine, he says that the vine can own, the vine must be connected to the branch. There must be a connection to the word eh? to produce fruit. He said, if there produces no, watch this what he says. He said, if the branch, if the vine does not produce any fruit, he will cut it off and cast it into. God says, are you producing fruit? And God is saying, I don't want you to be deceived by these Pharisees and these scribes. These, this religious order. I don't want you to be deceived, uh, Jessica, by these religious order growing up today. He said, I want you to know them by their fruit. He said, they're going to be known by their fruit. And some of them are going to be high. Some of them are going to hide behind traditions. Church rituals. But he said, you're going to know, you're going to know us by the fruit. The seed produce. You know, in Genesis, he said, let every, the Bible says in Genesis, let every fruit have the seed within itself and produce out its own kind. Yeah. I don't know where we got this thing that we receive in the seed, and yet in receiving the seed, we don't believe it's producing us to be something different. Keep on going. How can you speak good when you are evil? Say it again. How can you speak good when you are evil? Mm. How can you speak good when you are evil? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. It's kind of funny. It's almost like this. You see somebody in church and they preaching, right? Or you see them in their church and, they, and then when they walk out the church, they're like, girl, what's up? Give me them digits. I'm going to call you. I'm going to hook up with you. You notice it. They start spitting their game. Male or female. Entertaining their flesh in, in, in the house of God. Entertaining their flesh. And but they but just like they in the church. But he says, but you read that part again, uh, Kenny. How can you speak good when you are evil? So you're trying to speak good, but you're really evil. He's talking to the religion. You say you speak, you want to speak good. But watch what he said. He said, but you will know them by their what? Fruit. That means their, their, their fruit, because God, remember now, faith without works is what? So I can say something with my mouth, right, that appear like I'm good, but my actions are going to eventually come out and show you what I really want. 
That's why the Bible says, be slow to speak and quick to listen. Why? So you can see what's in their heart for real. So you can actually see the motive and the attention. The motive and attentions behind it. Is that God speaking? Because God's motive and intentions are motivated by love. Sacrificial love. The kind of love that tells you to esteem another higher than yourself. The kind of love that tells you if they slap you on one side, give them the other side. The kind of love that tells you if they ask you to go one mile, go two. And the truth is, I'd be like, God, I got to be connected to the vine because I can't produce that in myself. I cannot produce God. The Bible says that we can do nothing in ourselves. The scripture says you cannot produce the kind of love that God is in yourself. Some people can look like they, they can. They want, they, but you no, know, Satan is a what? Masquerader. But God says man judges the outward appearance, but I know the real intentions of your heart. I know what you really want. So do me a favor. God be like, do me a favor. Deny yourself. Pick up your cross and follow me. Sometimes you, you got to get to a place. Anybody ever been to a place where like, man, I don't trust how I feel in this situation. I'm not going to say this. I don't trust how I feel in this situation. I just, no, God, I don't, mm, I'm too angry. Right? I met my mind and how I feel about this person. Let me not, God, let me check, double check, because I don't trust me in this. Because we think, because you got some people that think every word come out their mouth, God. God this, God that, God this, God that, God that. And you know what? What's funny? I done seen it. And they're not even afraid to check their emotions and their feelings in certain situations before they say God. Because your emotions and your feelings, your, your situation can show, begin to influence you to begin to say something or move in a certain type of way. And it's not God. Paul when I desire to do good, evil is present. Paul said, I know there's another nature. There's something here that, mm, God, I, I, I want to be. That's why, the, that's why I think one reason the Bible says out of two or three minutes let that word be established because I don't, mm, God, I, let, let me make sure it's you. You know how, come on, y'all know how it is. You know in your heart you ain't really like this person. They say something, you don't really like this person. You ain't really care about this person. So all of a sudden you got a prophetic word. And your prophetic word Ain't nothing but your prophetic word is straight destruction toward that person. And nobody can't convince you that ain't God. That's you. And I'm going to say this to you. I'm not saying, yeah, I'm saying it might be best for you to ask God and when you know, because the bottom line is you know when you don't like somebody. We, we play these little games. You know when you got certain things in your mind that you might be dealing with, when you're struggling with because somebody said something to you in that point, and you know you might want to be in the place where David was, Lord, creating me a clean heart and the right spirit concerned in this situation right here because I'm really mad with my wife right now, and I'm really kind of upset right now, and I really don't like how she's doing that, so I'm not really going to trust what I'm going to be saying right now. I, need, I don't really trust me to be, that this coming from, so I need you to help me. Um, that's, 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 that's actually a sign of maturity. When Paul was able to decide, when Paul was able to discern the nature of his flesh versus the spiritual move of God, that's a sign of maturity. Amen. Go ahead. Wait, hold on. Let me say this. He says, for out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speak it. Remember what I told you, when we wrote, what I wrote earlier. We must know God's words. They are an expression of God's love. Amen? Um, remember this. What, God, what comes out of God's heart is not the same thing that comes out of Satan's heart. They are different. They are, they're, they're absolutely different. Amen? And Jesus here in 12 is making a distinguishing difference between the kingdom of God and the kingdom of wicked men who pretend they are godly. Because right here, he's dealing with the Pharisees. He's dealing with those who are pretending like they are godly. Who had the audacity to call him who was from God and say he the devil. And I love it when you break it down because you know who Jesus is. He the word, right? So they were basically saying that Jesus was the devil. Those words that he spoke and what he did, 
came from Satan. And Jesus said, boy, he, 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 he just politely let him know a kingdom divided against itself can't stand. If, if I was Satan casting out Satan. But see, the ignorance to that. Go ahead. The good person out of his good treasure brings forth good. And the evil person out of his evil treasure brings forth evil. Now watch this. A good, per watch this. A good man out of the good treasures of his heart brings forth good things. What does, it, what does the Bible say a man's heart should be? Where should, it, where should his treasure be? When you come to God, where should his treasure be? Of things above. So for you to bring out good things from your heart, you've got to be connected to the one above. Where rust and moth and the thief cannot steal. He said, where your treasure is, that's where your heart is. Whatever your heart is, it's going to tank the word of God. If your heart's so black, if your heart is so indulged in blackness, you will tank the word of God. If your heart is so indulged in being white, it will tank the word of God. If your heart is so indulged in money, it will tank the word of God. If your heart is so indulged in, 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 in your education, it will tank the word. You can't put anything above God because it is God who sets you free. The Bible says where the spirit of the Lord is and the Lord is that spirit, there is liberty. There's a freedom that comes from love. Amen. There is a freedom that comes from the place of love. The Bible says speak the truth in love. Amen. There's a freedom. Keep reading. And an evil person out of his evil treasure brings forth evil. And Earth. an evil person out of the evil treasure of their heart is going to bring forth that which is evil. Motive. The heart. What comes forth out of mouth is the motive. You see, the people behind it, what, 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 what's been, what has been exposed over the last years, I mean, probably for many years, but not that time. Um, the, the, the greed of men, the greed, uh, 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 the greed of men, the, uh, the pride of men that come out of their heart. And it begins to eventually show up and it's going to begin to taint the gospel. If you listen long enough, I remember one time I was listening to this pastor. Um, and I knew, and God, I'm going to tell you, the Holy Spirit said, I'm going to quick, watch this. You know what his, his, who his God really was? His God really was political affiliation. He was, he was a Democrat, true and blue in his heart. And he tainted the word of God with that. He tainted, he tainted the word of God with what he really loved, where he really thought power came from, where he really thought identity came from was the Democratic Party, so he mixed the word of God with it and pushed the Democrat agenda in that situation. And if somebody has a Republican and their heart is so light, boom, they will begin to use their horse in their heart and begin to push the Republican agenda behind the word of God. Lord, create in me a pure heart, a clean heart. Because the Bible says pure religion is untainted from the world. It is unspotted. It's not going to be influenced by the world. It, watch it. Why, why does true religion, why is true religion un, um, tainted from the world? It already has its objective. It doesn't need the world to give its objective. The true word of God's love already has its objective and purpose of what God wanted to do. Now, I know that, don't you? Okay, let me, let, me get, let me give you the simplest scripture. That God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whomsoever believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. That's God's objective and purpose. He who knew no sin became sin that we may become the righteousness of God. That's God's objective. And his objective is so strong that 
he told him, when I'm going, he said, it's better that I go, and the Father will send you a comforter. Amen? And he said, I will not leave you as orphans. I'm going to make you my sons. And then he says to, watch what he says next, watch what he says in the scripture. And where I am, so if you believe him, then you know this is not your home. You notice you, you're here on assignments. You are ambassadors here. And you are given assignments and situations to carry out because you know that when he returned, you want to be able to stand before the king of kings and Lord, Lord, and say, job well done, my faithful servant. Don't get it. Listen. Down here, it's beautiful in the sense of some of us get married. Some of us have families. Some people, I mean, many different ideas and creativities. But I want to tell you something, and I pray that don't be deceived by the natural prosperity of things, especially when, there's a, when there is a serious decline of spiritual morality. Amen? When there is a serious decline of obe disobedience to the word of God. And where there is disobedience to the word of God, it becomes a loveless nation. He told him in the book of Revelation, he said, you, you, say you, you left your first love. You're doing all this, but you left your first love. God there's a sanctification, you all, by the word of God. That's why, that's why you got to know the difference. That's why we have to know the difference between what God said and Satan over here saying, did God actually say that? Why? Because the motives behind them are different. It's not just simply not, but it's not simply, listen, church, it's not simply just believing one against the other. There's a motive behind the two that are different, that leaves you down different pathways. One leads you down a straight and narrow pathway. One leads you down a broad pathway. One leads you down a pathway of life. The other leads you down a pathway of darkness. Do not be deceived by Satan's deception of trickery in the time that we are in now to say it's okay to merge the two. We're in a time now where we believe that you can merge evil with good and good with evil. No, I'm, I'm going to show you, no, that's, that, that, that's not what God wanted. That's not what God wanted. That is not what God wanted. Finish reading that, and then we're going to. I tell you, on the day of judgment, people will give account for every careless word they speak. For by your words, you'll be justified, and by your words, you'll be condemned. How many of you know that he really talking about your heart? How many of us know he's actually talking about your heart right there? Out of the abundance of the what? What speaks? So he said, the words, your words, either you're going to be what? Justified, or you're going to be what? Condemned. So look, let me finish this. You're going to be justified or condemned by your words. That's why when you come, eat the word of God. Get the word of God in our hearts that we might not sin against him. Finish up. I'm going to let you go. I want to finish this part right here. Then he's going he to finish on verse 27, then 37. Then you can go ahead. Oh, that was 36. For by your words, I'm sorry, by that, I'm sorry, that's true. By your words, thou shalt be what? Justified? Abundant. For out of the abundance of the mouth, the heart talk. People, so when he was talking about, you don't know somebody say, you don't know what somebody, where they did, because I said, be quiet and long enough and listen to their words. He said, stop running your mouth so much about what you want and start just listening to their words and you'll begin to see if I abide there or not. He says, 
a good man out of the goodness of the treasures of his heart bring forth good things. And an evil man out of the evil of the treasures of brings forth evil things. We're talking about um, the heart. The Bible said, out of the abundance of the mouth, the heart speaks. But there's a scripture, uh, Proverbs 4, it says, keep vigilant, watch over your heart, that where life starts. So when you look up the word vigilant, it says to be, pay close attention, be very careful to to watch over and so the thing the thing that when the, when the Bible says everything he says is for for our benefit nothing he says for us is for our demise is for our rise so when we obey God in every facet phase of the word we're going to have a positive outcome because when your heart is bad it it will it will cause you to say things and do things that contradict the word of God and it will also cause you to get in trouble mm-hmm when your heart is bad. It will cause you to attack people, say things about people that you shouldn't be saying because you allowed something to get in your heart because you didn't do what the word says. Keep vigilant watch over your heart. So when you're, when you're being vigilant, that means, that means that every situation, that means that every situation that you have that seems to be of uh, offensive type nature, you need to deal with that right away. You don't need to go to bed and just say, okay, well, I'm just, no, 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 you need to deal with that. You need to assess, were you wrong in what you said? Were you wrong in how you handled that? And then you need to seek God, like, okay, God, I feel like this and I feel like that. How should I proceed with the situation? Should I call a person? Should I talk to them? Because when you're not, when you're not, do what, when you don't do what the word says, vigilant, something that vigilant, when you look at the word vigilant, it means something that you are attacking aggressively that you are being assertive. You're not being passive or laid back when it comes down to this because when you let things get into your heart, it will, it will cause you to preach different. It will cause you to preach, teach different. It will cause you to put a spin on people that, 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 that God is saying cover, but you're going to uncover them because your heart becomes cold. And, and because you didn't do what the word says, you weren't, you weren't aggressively attacking that area where you're protecting your heart, not letting offense come in. Because see, you can, you can stop offense from coming in. Oh, I just said something. You can stop it if you want to, because the Bible says you ought to forgive seven times seven in one day. So when you quickly forgive somebody for what they did, then, then your heart stays clean. Uh-huh. I'm going to say that again. When you quickly forgive somebody for what they did, and you make up in your mind that I'm going to love no matter what. And there may be some situations where you have people that, and I believe that we all have people that are in our lives and God purposely put them there to cause us to grow. That may be what we call hard to love. And so even with the people that God put in life that we that that are what we consider hard to love, the, the rules still apply that you are to forgive seven times seven in one day and that you are consistent and persistent and vigilant and aggressively dealing with these situations when they come the quickly the Bible says, don't let the sun go down. Do what the word says. And when you don't do what the word says, your heart becomes cold. I know, I know uh, we, had, we had a young lady that, that, um, that, was, that was in the ministry years ago. She does, she's not in the, in the ministry anymore. And she was offended by something that I said to her. So what she did was, this, this is someone who would prophesy all the time. And, with, and, you know, the prophecies, were, you know, for the most part that I know, they were on point. But when she let offense come into her heart, she prophesied with an offensive heart and spoke something that God didn't say. And, and, and it cost her big time. Um, you hear what I just said? Because she let something, she didn't, do, she, didn't, she didn't do what the scripture says. Be vigilant. Be consistent. Be aggressive. Be assertive and guarding your heart. She didn't guard her heart. She let offense, whether I was right or wrong, 
she didn't do what the word said. Because a lot of times people think, well, they did me wrong. But see, the scripture says how you supposed to handle it. That you were, he didn't say, well, if they were wrong, that, that I have the right to I have the right not to forgive them. That's a lie. See, when you do opposite what the word says, then you get a bad heart. But how you keep your heart clean and pure, do what the word says. Forgive seven times seven in one day. So this is what she did. So she she didn't she didn't let go of what she thought or what she felt that was wrong. So she took it upon herself out out of out of a out of a, a unclean heart prophesied and said that oh something gonna happen to your daughter. I said okay. I, I didn't I didn't say a word. So wind up she spoke quote I guess you could say death or spoke uh, something concerning uh, Amber. I didn't say a word. So no, not too long after that, something happened to her daughter. And she spoke out of an offensive heart, quote, unquote, prophesied, and got herself into trouble. I didn't say, God, you get it. No, no, she did it to herself. See, you, this why, see, when you don't do what the word says, things like that can happen. You begin to treat people different because you let something. And, 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 and if I haven't been through a lot of things, then I can say, well, maybe I can say no. No, it doesn't matter what they did. When you do what the word says, guard your heart. And when you do what it says, it doesn't matter what they do. You can keep your heart clean. I don't care if they're talking about you. I don't care if they're making up rumors. I don't care if they're lying. I don't care if they stole your money. I don't care if they beat you up. It doesn't matter what they did. When you do what the word says, your heart stays clean. Because the Bible says, vengeance is mine, I will repay. But when you take it upon yourself not to guard your heart, you put yourself in a bad situation. So she put herself in a bad situation where some hurt and harm came to her child because she did not, she did not do what the word says. She didn't guard her heart. And again, it, it's not that whether I was right or wrong, she didn't do what the word says. If I did something wrong, let, let God handle me. Don't you try to pay me back. And that's what she did. She took it upon herself to take, take vengeance, and she found herself in some serious trouble that she didn't have to be in. See, when we do what the word says, remember, and now you, you heard me say it before, the Bible's a gateway to our success. And what I mean by success, that you have victory in, in the areas that God wants you to have it when you do what it says. Amen? Amen. And notice that the word of God is motivated by the what? By the love of God. So even when you forgive you're, and somebody did you wrong you're continuously operating in love Amen. we must know that the love of God, the word of God he sent, the Bible says he gave he so loved the world that he gave his only begotten, his son is the word who became flesh he gave the word when we receive the son we receive the love of God the manifested love of God through his son Jesus Christ who gave his life for us. When we move in agreement, as prophet said, with the word, when you move with agreement with love and truth, you're going to get victory in a situation. The thing about it is, when you move in love in a loveless world, you might look like you're being clowned. You might be, look like you're going to be rejected. That's what Jesus was saying when you said to reign with him, is to suffer. Why? Because when you reign with love in a world that's loveless, they don't understand that you're operating in love. Especially when Satan has done such a great job, yes he has, in deceiving and manipulating what love looked like. Because the Pharisees and the scribes thought they were actually operating in love. Do you know Paul, do you know that Paul actually thought he was operating in love when he was doing, he had a zeal for the church. He actually thought he was doing God a favor. That's why he said, I did it in ignorance. He thought he was really doing God's work with a zeal, but he didn't understand that that was not God's work when he was persecuted, when he sat there and watched them stone uh, Stephen, and, and when he was pursuing the church, you know, and some people today, they actually believe that they are doing God's work. The Pharisees and scribes, these cats was tripping when they called them, they're thinking they, why? But, so, but they, but they, but see, when we treat this, when we give you the word, we're not giving you our opinion. When I tell you something, I'm gonna show you in the word of God that it is that it is true. The hearts of the Pharisees and scribes were so ungodly, though they were presenting themselves as godly every day. Even when it came down to Jesus being persecuted, do you know when Jesus, when they said, when they were saying, should we persecute him or not? 
the Pharisees and the scribes, you know what they said? They said, Caesar is our king. They declared that their heart was connected to a worldly system. They was in the church on the Sabbath, reading the Torah, doing all these rituals, and yet their heart and their power source was connected to the world. That's why in the Testament, in the New Testament, he says, let your heart be where your treasure is. And no because you got to make sure, Lord, detach. Come on, y'all. We got to say, God, Lord, please detach my heart from the world. I don't want to be deceived. Please detach my heart from the world. For the Bible says, he who loved the world and the things in it, the love of God is not in him. So, God, disconnect what, what I love. Because in my heart, I might think I don't love this, but I love that. Amen. Sometimes you may think you don't realize. I, I, and God be like, no, you love that. You, 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 you love that. You love it more than me. Be like, no, I don't. And God says, I'm going to show you you love it more than me. Amen. I want, this is the last thing. I'm, 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 I'm going to go here. I'm going to read this. Um, but I'm going to tell you where it is. It's 2 Corinthians. I want to show you. I think it's important. God has put this in my heart. To, to, to make sure that we understand there is a distinguishing difference between when God's word and Satan's attempt to speak a word and the motive behind it. Um, go to 2 Corinthians, the sixth chapter. Because and y'all could, I want y'all thoughts on, I want your uh, thoughts on this for a minute. Which is, we thinking like, man, that we mixing. And I think God is really showing it in the natural in certain ways that everybody can be in this. We're mixing music. We're missing, we're mixing things that are supposed to be holy unto God. The Bible says, be holy for I am holy. Am I right? There's a holiness. How many of you know there is a sanctification? In God, God says there is a separate, and we need to understand that you are, you and I are called in Christ to be separated. And I, I, I want to read. I'm gonna read this verse to you, and it's verse 14. And I want I'm gonna read it. It says this: Be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. That's number one. He said, "Do not." He says, "Be." God is not playing. He says, "Be ye not unequally yoked." together with unbelievers. Y'all know what it means to be yoked with something, right? To be partnered with something. Do you know that most young ladies and men in church today don't even care if that dude is saved when they talk to him? Or if that, one, if that people say, oh, he go to church. The devil go to church. The Bible says, try the spirit. That word try means to test it. See if it be of him. Because why? Because I don't care that person. God don't care about that person singing in no choir and doing a lot of work for God. Do they bear fruit? Do you know right now if you were to hook up, prop, prop, if they were to hook up, with one, and, and when we was in Matthew 16, right, what we just came out of, if you were to hook up with one of the Pharisees and scribes, you wouldn't have been hooking up with no man of God. But you would have thought you would have been hooking up with a man of God. If you, if you would have connected, if you was one that time and connected one of those men that was one of the Pharisees and scribes operating as the men of God at that period of time, do you know those the same men that God called that Jesus that their father was the devil, but yet they were doing all the rituals and through, So that means if you came into the temple and you started hooking up with them and they started connecting you with that situation, you would have been thinking you hooking up with God and God said I don't even know him. But he gave us, he gave us a sign. He gave us understanding, a sign that was greater than he said. He said, you will know them by their fruit or a good tree. So the bottom line, he said, watch their fruit. Because if they're connected to the branch, they're going to have to produce the fruit of the branch. Their life is going to have to reflect the glory of God. Amen. Don't tell me you don't know. Y'all think, I, no, I've been in, the Holy Spirit will teach you. You'll go through it. I'm serious. I'll be talking to I see my daughter, spiritual girl. He say, and then sometimes the girl or the guy, they not even doing stuff that's saved. 
They right in front of you and act like, well, he don't really care. He don't really care about God. He, he, he does. He know of God. So why are you sitting there trying to push up on something that the word told you, that love told you don't be yoked to that? Love told you do not be connected to that. Oh, he cute. And what that got to do with what God said? Oh, she fine. What does it have to do with what God said? I didn't say it. And did I say it? The word says it right here. Be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. If he, unbelie if, he, if he or she is not an unbeliever, you're not supposed to be yoked with them. Don't confuse your assignment. Then you wonder why we spend so much time counseling, right? People after they get married. He started going to church. He started like, did you see any fruit? See, the problem with some of us is you don't know what fruit is. Let me give you a, let me give you a, let me give you on Zoom and give everybody a, a, a way to identify, one way to identify. The Bible says, know those who labor among you. I want us to. See, the world is convinced by their mate, by how somebody's laboring to get them. The church is convinced by their mate, by how somebody's laboring to serve God. Am I right, bro? The church, how he labors to serve God should be a blessing on how he treats you, but you ought to know he loved God. Sarah knew Abraham, the one she called Lord, she knew his relationship with God. Because she saw God do what he told him he was going to do. Let me finish you, okay. Yet, it said, be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers or with, or what fellowship has righteousness with unrighteousness? What fellowship, fellowship you now, what, how are you fellowshipping with something that is unrighteous? Now watch this. The Bible tells us that, that he who knew no sin became sin that we may take on his right. If I'm taking on his righteousness, right, then the righteousness of God has been imputed to me. But through the seed is producing the nature. He said, I have given you all things pertaining to life and godliness. There is a maturing and a growing up. Let me, let me break it down. There is a maturing and growing up, right? This is not something that you, when you step into it, it's, step, it's just like growing. It's maturing. But the maturing, but see, the bottom line is you want to wait till they mature in the first place because they're not mature enough and they're not ready for no relationship anyhow. You know, keep, you know, I know in the world they're like, that's your little boyfriend. God don't play them little games. God don't play no God does not play them games with his babies like we do with our babies. You look at girl, you wait, yo, that's I look at that's just the girl baby. I come, you go to school, mama. Your little daughter got a good boyfriend. Oh no, let me help you out. No, she don't. You so no, she don't. She don't have a boyfriend. She don't even know who she is. I'm not gonna let you do it to that little boy or do it to her. Ain't nothing cute about it. God, ain't, God don't play that same game when you're in church because guess what? When you come to God, may you be 25, 35, may you be 55, may you be 22. The Bible says you must come to him like a what? Child. You must be born again. So all that, we ain't going to play that game in the church either. Ooh, y'all look cute together. Girl, that's your boyfriend. God don't care nothing about your age, your, your academic, I mean your education, your financial status, where you perceive that you somebody. The Bible said when you come to him, you got to come like a child, like to be born again. Why? Because you're now learning how to learn. He want to teach. When you come like a child, you know what a mama do with a child? She holds him in a bosom. Am I right or wrong? She feed him. I was talking to Jatil today. It was so funny. As I was watching Jatil, I, I came in her room and, 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 and Chosen was all over her. I was trying to get Chosen. He was laying on her lap. He, he was had his head, he watching, he watching, and he just, he, I said, he just love his mama. Cause what? He's, she's nourished a relationship the same way God wants us to be. He wants to nourish you. Let me tell you something. That's why when you get saved, 
One of the greatest tricks of the enemy is when you just start going to church is to try to send you somebody. To take your affection from the one who's trying to teach you what affection really is. That's uh, Let me give you scripture again. The Bible says a single woman, her affections belong to the... The Bible says a single woman, her affections belong to the... So it only makes sense that Satan redirected and say, no, give your affections to somebody, to your, to, to your boo. The Bible, I don't say it, it's in the scripture. He says her, a, a single woman, her affections belong to the Lord. Why? Because God ain't going to contradict himself. But she might as well give her affections to the Lord. Why? So that when a man found her, he found a good thing. He found one attaining one who has the Lord instead of one who was what? Fixated on her own flesh. <laughs> Amen. This stuff, this ain't no, see, your flesh ain't going to like this. The flesh don't like the message of God. Why? Because the message of God nails it to a cross. Love will tell you crucify it. Why? So you can operate in love and you can be able to draw love so you will know what love looked like. So you won't be, so why? Because God did never design you and me to be used, to be dogged out, to be treated like some porn flick. God never designed for you to be walking around and acting like some dog. May I love female. You know what the Bible says? He says, do not open up love before it's time. He connected that directly to sex. Do not open it up before it's time. Because when you open that door to the wrong thing, you become a slave to it. It has your eyes watching things. I know. It has your eyes watching things you, that, that um, shouldn't be watching. Your flesh be having a craving and desire for things that are contradiction to God. I know mine do. And I'm so glad that greater is he that's in me, that he that's in the world. Amen. You can see your flesh. You can feel it. That's why it's the, it's the corruptible thing. They got to be, they, that's why the Bible says we die daily. He says you got to do what? Today? We say every day you got to do what? You got to put that flesh to death every day. Mess around and don't put it to death for three days and watch how it start tripping. It'll start rising up. I want that. No, I want this. Let me finish it. For what, what, for what fellowship has righteousness with unrighteousness? Question. And what communion has light with darkness? What communion? Look at the words he's using. Fellowship. Communion. To be yoked to be to be yoked to something. Read read fifteen. No, we're not gonna wait. What accord has Christ with be Belial? Be 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 uh, he don't have nothing. Satan don't have no dealings with Satan. With Satan, they not buddies. <laughs> they not. They not. But they don't hang out. The devil and the devil and, and, and Christ don't hang out. No. They they not. They not. They not like this. Point we this point, like some Catholic talking about this that, that that's no. They not son. They not. They not. They not tight. And Satan understand which one who and Satan do understand which one holds the authority and power. Go ahead. But what portion does a believer share with an unbeliever? What agreement has the temple of God with idols? What agreement does the temple of God have to do with idols? Go ahead. For we are the temple of the living God. Who, as... who is the temple? So what do you and I have to do with idols? I don't care. American idols, no idols. Japanese idols. 
I don't care. No idol. Amen. Go ahead. As God said, I will make my dwelling among them and walk among them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Therefore, go out from their midst and be separate from them, says the Lord. God said, go out from their midst and be separate from them. The Bible says that we are called to be a light to the world. Amen? You can't bring nobody out of darkness if you're playing with it. You know, when I'm in the world, the female, I remember, I remember when I was in the world, I was talking to this young dude, and she was Christian. I mean, she, no, she was Christian. I guess she was Christian. No, I just know where she was on Saturday night. Um, I know she was Christian. I couldn't imagine her rolling over talking about, you know what? You, you want to go, you wanna go, go to church with me and get saved? You want to go, girl, you laying in my bed, butt neck, what you talking about, go get saved? What are you talking about God for? You, what, what are you wanting? But see, we think it's a game. So if I get saved, I can do the same thing you do? So getting saved really don't, so what? I get it. Getting saved don't really mean, getting saved really don't mean becoming committed to the one you're in a relationship with. So God can be my sideline. And I'll call on him when I need him. I'm just trying to listen. God said there's a difference. And that difference is not pride and arrogance. That difference is that difference comes with an assignment to bring people out. To bring people out. But I can't bring you out. The Bible said, let the blind lead the blind into a ditch. If I can't see how I'm gonna lead you anywhere. And that don't mean I'm perfect. I'm being perfected through the Holy Spirit. I'm, I'm being groomed, amen? I'm, I'm maturing. But the Bible told me this. Take the beam out of my eye first, right? It did not tell me not to take the beam out of your eye. People be mis mis uh, people misquote. No, don't finish the scripture. It says take the beam out of your own eye. Then you can take the beam. He said, what, if he, what is he saying? That when I remove the beam, when God takes the beam out, when you can see clearly, now I want you to help somebody else see clearly. He's not saying when you can see clearly, just leave somebody else blind. But he also saying, if you can't see clear, how you gonna help somebody see clear? So God clear my eyes in the areas that I'm struggling with. That's why we remember we saying, what does God say? God clear my eyes in the area of doubt. God clear my eyes in the area of um, unbelief. God clear my eyes in the area of of, um, of lust. God clear my eyes in the area of anger. Why? Because once you cause me to see your love the right way in this area, I can cause somebody else to see your love in the right way in this area. God, clear my eyes in the area of finances the right way. Yeah, finances. To, clear my eyes in a way to know how to handle finances in a way, God, that will be, that, the, way you want, the way you want to be handled. Clear my eyes, God, to be able to see clear. Open my eyes to see. Open my ears that I might hear. Open up my heart that I might receive your word. Why? So I can be a reflection on God, God on earth. So I can be a reflection of who you are. I can be a witness of your glory on earth. Because you say, God, as it is in heaven, as, as, it, as it is on earth, as it is in heaven, let it be on earth. That seed now in you. Now people can see heaven on earth when you move in the way the word God, the God calls you to move. When you forgive the way God. Let go. Come on tonight. Somebody let go some bitterness. Tonight, let go some unforgiveness. Amen. Tonight, let go of some, uh, uh, of some things that you know that you're struggling. Let go some doubt. Amen? Tonight, just a mind made up because you, you are the temple of God. You, when, when Jesus Christ returns, he's not returning for no building. You're the church he's returning for. He stepped out of the building according to what Kenny just read. He stepped out of the building and stepped into your heart. Now, the Holy Spirit is dwelling in you, going to produce fruit that bring glory to God. Amen? There's a difference, y'all. We first started out, he told there is a difference between the tree. Was that finished? We, we, we didn't read the next verse for a second. Therefore, go out from their midst and be separate from them, says the Lord, 
and touch no unclean thing. Then I will welcome you, and I will be a father to you, and you shall be my sons and daughters to me, says the Lord Almighty. No, you're going to be a Baptist. You're going to be a Pentecostal. He said, touch no unclean thing, and you will be my sons and daughters. Because you know God. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and light. There is no other way back to the Father. I know your objective. God. I know why you sent me. I know what you're doing. I know what you're coming for. I know what the God, and I know, you know, I had this vision, man, I, was, I, was, I thought it was so funny, I saw this, I said I was going to get his hand, I probably, I don't know, but I saw this, I saw like all these men lined up, and I, I saw this today, I thought it was so funny, I saw men in different nations lined up, and what was funny about these men lined up is that they were dressed different. I saw a man from Africa, they had on the thing here, and I saw a man from Scotland, they had the, 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 the which name on I saw different men from different nations lined up. And I heard in my spirit when I saw these different men, he said, it is nothing on the external or how they are dressed. It is the heart. So America, stop preaching as though the external part. See, America want to create a gospel. That's, America want to create a gospel around American style, culture. In a sense of America say, well, we wear a suit. We wear a tie. We wear this. And they want to tie gospel into the external words. One woman talking about, well, I heard one woman say the other day, she's talking about men, stop, men, stop being, wear socks. When did it become, if a, one, if a man put on socks, wear shoes or not, what they got to do with being saved? What they got to do with being feminine? Now, I'm going to get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. There are some feminine things, men, that, that, that God is not, that God is not um, signing off on no man. And the feminine things that men, that, it seems like, it's like men so out of order now. They want to become women. And women so out of order now, they want to become men. All you doing, all you seeing is a shift. Now the woman, the woman is becoming the dominant, like the, but that's the male you out. That's out of order. That's out of order. Where men want to sit there, men have become so they want to sit there and, and be it's, it's not, they want to sit there and run in a race for women. You so bad out of you, we so out of order. We want to go beat the woman in her own field. See, it, it's twisted. But I thank God that God has a plan. That God is God. God has He has implemented a plan in His Son. Amen. And that word is not going to return void. It's going to prosper in that which God has sent it to do, because it's prospering in you. Amen? Can somebody just point your finger in there and say, it's prospering in me? If you're on Zoom, can you just point your finger at yourself and say, the word of God is prospering in me. It's prospering in me. Amen? And, I'm, and, I, and, that, and the glory of God is being manifested through my life as he takes me from glory to glory to glory. Amen? And the love, and I, want, I don't know about y'all, I want that love of God. Amen? Because I believe when you got the love of God, you're really free. When people are like props, when somebody look at you the wrong way, you know how to love. People doesn't, and, and, and one thing the man of God said is so true. Don't let your react cancel you out because somebody else might have been wrong. Yeah, they might have been wrong, but watch your react. Because this in this new church, it tried to justify that react because of the act. No, just because someone do do do, do you wrong. There is nothing in the Bible that says you gotta, that you have to step out of God's word. Matter of fact, the Bible says do not do evil for evil. Any questions? Did we learn something tonight? And I hope we go, what, 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 was, what, what, what was that? Matthew, what it was? Matthew 12. Go read it, y'all. I hope everybody in this room, go read Matthew 12. I'm telling you, it's all of it. Read all of it, but it's really powerful. When you see Jesus go, well, Jesus go in on the Pharisees. He go in and say, "Let's we gonna we gonna split this thing wide open. We are gonna show you there's two different sides here, and we are gonna talk about that. I'm gonna show you the difference between those sides. It's the heart. Amen. Let's bow our head, Father God. We thank you tonight for your word. We thank you for renewed mercies, God. God, you know each and every one of us. Not one person in this room can hide from you. We are all naked and exposed. God, let us not be like Adam and Eve.
that when they partook of sin and they heard you coming in the garden, they began to hide themselves. And then when they began to speak, they began to blame and one another and they began to God, we have sinned and because Jesus has made a way for us to escape, we confess our sins. And we know in your word it says that you are faithful to forgive us and that you will cleanse us of all unrighteousness. God, help us in the areas where we need to learn how to love. Cause our eyes to be open to see your love in a manner in which we should see it. Because God, if we love somebody, we won't lie to them. God, if we love someone, we won't sleep with them unless we were married to them. If we really love somebody, God, we wouldn't talk and slander behind their back. So God, help us love like you love. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.